to the Blue Dolphin News Network. I am Dwayne. And I am Anaya. Please stand for the flag salute. Ready, begin. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now for our school motto. Be safe, live responsibly, understand, respect, and encourage each other. Go Blue Dolphins! You may be seated. Joke of the day. What do demons eat for breakfast? I don't know. What? Deviled eggs. <laughs> Here is a fun fact. Before becoming president, Lincoln lost five different elections. Quote of the day by Oscar Wilde. Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. Dolphins continue to make a splash. Hello, wonderful third to fifth graders. I hope you're doing super amazing. I hope, you're had, I hope you had a great weekend. And we've been talking about this week um, about kindness and the power of our words, right? Not only the power of our words, but the power of our actions as well, right? Because what you do also makes a profound impact. We're gonna be reading a really, reading a really sweet book and I'm gonna to get to it because it's a little bit of a longer picture book and it's called um, Each Kindness. So let me share my screen. And I'm going to read this to you. Each Kindness by Jacqueline Woodson. That winter, snow fell on everything, turning the world a brilliant white. One morning, as we settled in our seats, the classroom door opened and the principal came in. She had a girl with her and she said to us, this is Maya. Maya looked down at the floor. I think I heard her whisper, hello. We all stared at her. Her coat was open and the clothes beneath it looked old and ragged. Her shoes were spring shoes, not meant for the snow. A strap on one of them had broken. So you could tell a lot by her body language walking in, and she must feel scared because it's her first day in that school. Our teacher, Miss Albert, said, say good morning to our new student, but most of us were silent. The only empty seat was next to me. That's where a teacher put Maya. And on that first day, Maya turned to me and smiled, but I didn't smile back. I moved my chair, myself, and my books a little farther away from her. When she looked my way, I turned to the window and stared out at the snow. And every day after that, when Maya came into the classroom, I looked away and didn't smile back. It must be hard for Maya as a new student. And you can see it right here. Look at her. My best friends that year were Kendra and Sophie. At lunchtime, we walked around the schoolyard, our fingers laced together, whispering secrets into each other's ears. One day, while we were near the slide, Maya came over to us. She held open her hand to show us the shiny jack and tiny red ball she had gotten for her birthday. It's a high bouncer, she said, but none of us wanted to play, so Maya played a game against herself. This afternoon, that afternoon, when we got back into the classroom, Maya whispered to me, but you can't guess who the news Jack, Jack's champion of the world is. Behind me, Andrew whispered, Chloe got a new friend, Chloe's got a new friend. She's not my friend, I whispered back. The weeks passed. Each day we whispered about Maya, laughing at her clothes, her shoes, the strange food she brought for lunch. Some days Maya held out her hand to show us what she had brought to school, a deck of cards, Pick up sticks, a small tater doll. Whenever she asked us to play, we said no. You can imagine how Maya felt. The days grew warmer and warmer. Grass began growing where snow once had been. 
One day Maya came to school wearing a pretty dress and fancy shoes, but the shoes and the dress looked like they belonged to another girl before Maya. I have a new name for her, Kendra whispered. Never knew. Everything she has came from a secondhand store. We all laughed. Maya stood by the fence. She was holding a jump rope but never did not come over to us to ask if we wanted to play. After a while, she folded and double, rolled the ends around each hand and started jumping. She jumped around the whole schoolyard without stopping. She didn't look up once. Just jumped, jumped, and jumped. She was probably tired of asking them to be friends, right? She seemed like she was really trying hard. The next day, Maya's seat was empty. In class that morning, we were talking about kindness. Miss Albert brought a big bowl into class and filled it with water. We all gathered around her desk and watched her drop a stone into it. Tiny waves rippled out away from the stone. This is, is what kindness does, Miss Albert said. Each little thing we do goes out like a ripple into the world. So each one of those ripples are representative of what we do in terms of kindness, right? Then Miss Albert let us each drop the stone in as we told her what kind things we had done. Joseph had held the door for his grandma, grandmother. Kendra helped change her baby brother's diaper. Even mean old Andrew had done something. I carried teacher's books up the stairs, he said, and Miss Albert said it was true. I stood there holding Miss Albert's rock in my hand, silent. Even small things count, Miss Albert said gently, but I couldn't think of anything and passed the stone on. She probably had many opportunities to be kind, but she let them go. Maya didn't come to school the next day or the day after that. Each morning I walked to school slowly, hoping this would be the day Maya returned and she'd look at me and smile. I promised myself that I'd smile back. Each kindness, Miss Albert said, makes the world a little bit better. So she, I guess she had a heavy heart, like she wasn't being kind to Maya and she realized that it was really hurting her now. But Maya's seat remained empty and one day Miss Albert announced to the class that Maya wouldn't be coming back. Her family had to move away, Ms. Albert said. Then she told us to take our notebooks. It was time for spelling. So it was a missed opportunity to be kind to Maya. That afternoon, I walked home alone. When I reached the pond, my throat filled with all the things I wish I, had, had, I would have said to Maya. Each kindness I have never shown. I threw small stones into it over and over, watching the water ripple out and away, out and away like each kindness done and not done, like every girl somewhere holding a small gift out to someone and that someone turning away from it. So she's thinking about all the opportunities she had to be kind and she didn't take. I watched the water ripple as the sun set through the maples and the chance of kindness with Maya became more and more forever gone. each kindness. So really we're thinking about a missed opportunity, right? Where we have a new student that came in who may not have dressed like the other students or may not have looked like the other students, but what a missed opportunity for these children to really allow her to feel welcomed or to feel loved. So we, I'm just asking you class to make sure that you spread kindness, spread kindness to people that you know, spread kindness to people that you do not know. Always make people feel welcomed and loved because you'll never know when you're going to see them again or when they may need that love, right? Because sometimes we just need a kind word from someone or a kind text message, a kind smile on Zoom, a kind, how are you doing? Or you look great from someone because you never know what people are going through.